All right, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, without wasting any further time, let's get started with the keynote of the digital SME track. This presentation is titled, The Digital Economy, The Heat Is On. In this session, we will understand what needs to be done if Malaysia is to make headway in ensuring that we have the ecosystem to facilitate our digital transformation and an exclusive digital economy. Our keynote speaker was the Secretary General of the Malaysian Ministry of International Trade and Industry for six years, where she oversaw the formulation of Malaysia's international trade policies and positions. Not only that, she also chaired the body that drafted the ASEAN Economic Community 2015 and 2025 blueprint. Ladies and gentlemen, let's all welcome Yang Berbahagia, Tan Sri Dato Dr. Rebega Fatima, APEC Secretariat of Singapore. Let's give her a huge round of applause. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Greetings from the APEC Secretariat in Singapore. I must thank the organizers of this event for this kind invitation to share my thoughts on this very important subject. Let me, let me begin with a brief introduction to the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation, or APEC. We are a regional organization comprising 21 economies that border the Pacific Ocean. Malaysia was a founding member of APEC. It is not uncommon when we meet to discuss the topic of small and medium enterprises or micro, small and medium enterprises that we provide a list of statistics on the significance of MSMEs to our economies, their contribution to employment, GDP, etc. I've decided that the most effective way I can help all of us frame the topic of this conference is to share with you three cases. The first two have to do with the APEC App Challenge and the APEC Digital Prosperity Award. The winners of the APEC Digital Prosperity Award are selected from the participants of the APEC App Challenge. The award recognizes innovative digital products or applications that have the potential to increase prosperity and inclusive growth. The App Challenge is a joint initiative of the, App Se of the APEC Secretariat with the support from the Asia Foundation and Google. It celebrates the kind of creativity that helps members solve some of the region's most pressing challenges. This is our way of engaging the youth of the region to show us real life potential digital technologies by providing practical solutions to everyday problems, both big and small. A couple of years ago, through the APEC App Challenge, we asked the young app developers to work on a solution towards inclusive growth. Faizra Rizalman and Jeanette Gun of Bayou Harvest were the recipients of the APEC Digital Award, Digital Prosperity Award 2019. They designed a mobile app and e-commerce platform to help women and smallholder farmers move products into a high value supply chain. Faizra, who is from Sabah, said that the idea to develop Bayou Harvest came about when she was frequently asked by women farmers in the state on how to increase their income and improve their livelihoods. These farmers would sell their products to middlemen who would acquire the harvest in large quantities but at low prices. The farmers had very little choice in the matter. Faizra worked with Jeanette Go who is an experienced digital entrepreneur from Kuala Lumpur, to take part in the APEC App Challenge. They focused on how they could use technology to help these farmers. They helped the farmers manage, price, brand, and market their produce. This is a very lightweight, friendly app that doesn't need the high-speed internet connection or a lot of memory space on their phones. Thus far, they've managed to reach out to over 100 farmers across five villages in Sabah. The, the pair emphasize that the app doesn't require that much data to run, 
So farm, farmers in the rural areas could use the app with the limitations of the internet infrastructure. Because of the current pandemic situation, they have had to tweak their business model so as to continue assisting the farmers sell their produce under the Bayou Harvest brand. My second case is the APEC Traveler app, built by an exceptional team of developers from Malaysia. They were the winners of the APEC Digital Prosperity Award 2021. The Malaysian team developed a digital tool that focused on supporting the resumption of tourism, an essential sector for economic recovery post-pandemic. The team prioritized the digital transformation of the tourism industry through the uptake of smart technologies and digital tools with the goal of boosting safe and seamless travel to meet visitor demand. After verifying one's status with a healthcare professional, the APEC Traveller app would make it possible for travellers to confirm their COVID vaccination status at APEC economy border crossings and immigration checkpoints by using a QR code. The winning team is led by Faisal Arif, a former fund manager turned startup founder and includes Nick Amir Rizan Sulaiman, Amjad Alhanish and Sherman Peter. They explain that this problem is by no means easy to solve but the potential impact could be huge because of the contribution of international tourism to the economies in the region. This app has the potential to make it easier for nearly 1.9 billion fully vaccinated travelers in APEC to move around the region. For those of you who have the APEC business travel card, you can appreciate the facility of the APEC lane at our airports. This app would possibly make the, app, the APEC lane even more relevant and useful to the common man or woman traveling between APEC economies as long as they're vaccinated. What is needed in both these cases is not only to take pride in the achievement of these young Malaysians, but also to en engage them and provide the appropriate support to help them scale their business. Our role in APEC is to plant the seed. Governments and those within this, the ecosystem should help to take this forward. My third case is coincidentally also from Sabah. Last year, when Malaysia went into lockdown and students had to study from home, some realities about the internet connectivity hit home in a very concrete way. Viviona Mosibin, an 18-year-old student from University Malaysia, Sabah, had to sit for exams from home. But here's the problem. Viviona uh, is from a remote village in Sabah. Internet access was a challenge. It was okay for online classes and to serve the internet, but for her exams, she needed stronger and uninterrupted connection. Being the resourceful person that she was, she hiked up a hill to study for better internet access and later on stayed on a tree for 24 hours to complete her exams. She posted her experience on her YouTube channel and gained national and even international attention. So what do these three cases have to do with the topic of this conference? They are but pieces of a picture of what needs to be done if we are to make headway in ensuring that we have the ecosystem to facilitate our digital transformation and an inclusive digital economy. At the recent APEC CEO summit, the key takeaways were that the next level of regional economic integration is regional digital economic integration, the digital economy and the green economy with inclusivity at its core. Let me just focus on the digital economy. It was pointed out that by 2025, the annual Asia Pacific spending on information and communications technology will exceed US $1 trillion. And with the internet economy in Southeast Asia alone, projected to be over $300 billion 
US dollars a year. The progress for digital economic integration has begun. Singapore, Chile, New Zealand have signed the Digital Economy Partnership Agreement or DEPA. This is fast gaining traction. China's President Xi has already indicated China's interest to join DEPA. The agreement is the first of its kind. It establishes new approaches and collaboration in digital trade issues, promotes interoperability between different regimes, and addresses the new issues brought about by digitalization. So in brief, this agreement facilitates seamless end-to-end -end digital trade, namely e-invoicing, paperless trade, e-payments, enables trusted data flows, so personal data protection, cross-border data flows, data-driven innovation, and builds trust in digital systems, adopting ethical AI, capacity building for SM SMEs, online consumer protection, digital inclusivity. Recall how the Comprehensive and Progressive Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement, or CPTPP, had its roots in the P4, four smaller economies in APEC. It began with Singapore, New Zealand, Chile, and Brunei forming the P4. And today, the CPTPP, uh, comprising 11 parties, is the gold standard for free trade agreements. So I can see DEPA being the building block towards a larger regional or global digital infrastructure. So the momentum towards the digital economy has begun in APEC. The pandemic has just made this an imperative that governments cannot ignore. Malaysia has a comprehensive to-do list if it, if it is not to be left behind. In summary, there must be focused on, focus on digital infrastructure and when the infrastructure is in place to ensure that there is affordable access to technology, specifically universal internet access. In addition, I believe more should be done to improve information technology literacy to ensure that the populace has the requisite skills to take advantage of the technology. Capacity building, covering soft skills, and better use of technologies, including dealing with cybersecurity and data privacy concerns, ability to identify and deal with digital fraud, and online misinformation. So support for MSMEs must include customer data protection and internet security. At the same time, there is the need to restructure the education system and recalibrate the curriculum to ensure that our people get the best from digital developments. Our education and training systems need to adapt to better prepare people for the flexibility and critical thinking skills they will need in the future workplace. But in all this, we must not forget the basics. Specifically, government's role in the ease of doing business. It is necessary to look at policies, processes, procedures, regulatory framework to ensure that they are transparent, predictable, fit for purpose, and provide the required support for just and inclusive economic development. Also, the need to have constant reality checks about the impact of decisions on the average person in general and the MSMEs specifically. Finally, Malaysia is an open economy. As such, it needs to seriously consider trade and investment policy as it delays ratification of key agreements such as the CPTPP and, our, and the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, or RCEP, others are moving ahead. Tied to this is the question of Malaysia's competitiveness, investment environment, and commitment to structural reform and governance. For sure, the discussion on inclusion in a digital society 
cuts across sectors and different parts of government. It is necessary to work collaboratively and collaborative, collaboratively here includes interagency at the domestic level, as well as collaboration and engagement with the private sector, media, and the community, as well as regional and international organizations. I thank you very much for your attention.